Good afternoon, dear teachers and students. My name is Ksenia Sergeyevna, and today I would like to introduce the lesson, which is taken from the course plan, and the theme is Reading for Pleasure. I have chosen the book, which is called Anthem, and the author of this book is Ayn Rand. Okay, let's start our lesson. Firstly, students, tell me, please, how are you feeling today? Show me. Okay, great. Most of you have your thumbs up. It means that we can start our lesson. Now, please follow my instructions. Firstly, stand up. Then look at the person next to you. Say hello to him or to her. The next one, please shake your hands. Say a compliment to him or to her. Good job. Now say another compliment, another one. Do not repeat them. And finally, please say to your partner wishes. Wish something. Okay, thank you. Sit down. Tell me please, do you like playing games? If you do, please clap your hands. Great. Now, my task will be, I will call out a letter and you should make your bodies into that shape. Please be attentive. So are you ready to start? So the first letter for you, R, please make your bodies into R. Then E, well done, A. Next letter is D. What about this one? I, I think this is the easiest one. Then N. And finally, this is G. Can you guess what the word is? What about your ideas, the word? Awesome, you're right, this is a reading. Today we are going to start a new unit, which is called Reading for Pleasure. Please look at the board. These are our learning objectives for this lesson. Today you will be able to express your opinion and reaction to your book. Also, you will negotiate in a group and uh, work as a team. You will be able to discuss the plot, the theme of the book, the main characters in the book, and to expand your, uh, your vocabulary as well. Uh, and you have to analyze the message of the author and give your evidences from the book. And the final objective is to discuss the social issues which raised through your white reading. Okay, so the George Christoph Lichtenberg says that reading means borrowing. What do you think about it? What are your ideas about these quotes? Now, I will give you a task. Your task will be to choose a quote about reading books and explain its meaning with your own word examples. And please do it in pairs. Look at the board here, you can see the read, uh, quotes itself. Number one, a reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one, says George Martin. Number two, by Dr. Seuss, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you will go. Next one, by Joseph Brodsky, there are worse crimes than burning books. One of them is not reading them. And finally, the last one, by Carlos Ruiz Zeffen. Books are mirrors, you only see in them what you already have inside you. Please discuss it in pairs and say your own opinion. Okay, great job. So I, our unit is called Reading for Pleasure. Here you can see a word cloud. There are different words in it, for example, like a magazine, open your mind, culture, understand. Now, can you tell me how are these words related to reading for pleasure? Can you discuss it in pairs? For example, student one, you can ask the question, what do you think about the word culture? And your partner can say, I love reading about other cultures, so for me this is reading for pleasure. It makes me think about my own culture a lot. So now look at this word uh, cloud again and discuss the words which are given there in pairs. Finally, we have to stop. Thank you. Now. Look at the board, please. Here you can see the covers of the book. Tell me, please, what genres of books do you think they are? What are the books about? And which of the books would you most like to read? And why? Thank you for your answers. This is the same covers of the book. 
Now your task will be to match the book covers and the genres and then write the names to other journals by yourself. A. This is a thriller. B. Romantic. C. Detective story. D. Biography. E. Science fiction. F. Cell health book. And don't forget about two other journals which you have to write by yourself. I give you two minutes to do it. Just match one and you have to write the example. For example, A, B or C. You have to choose. So, are you ready to check your ideas? Let's see. The first one was B. Number two, this is A. Number three, D. Number four, this is F. Five, C. And six, this is E. Thank you. Now, let's talk about other genres which we know. You have said that they are fiction and non-fiction. Yeah, you were right. The Roman, science fiction, historical fiction, realistic fiction, fantasy and mystery, they are all, uh, all connected to the fiction. What about non-fiction? You said that they are biographies, yeah, then autobiographies and encyclopedias themselves. Okay, now, can you think of other examples of genres and give me a popular works? For example, can you think of a romance? Yeah, it can be a Pride and Prejudice, for example. What about the science fiction? Yeah, the famous one, The War of the Worlds by Wells. What about War and Peace? What genre is it? Yeah, this is a historical fiction. Bridge to Therabithia will be the realistic fiction. What about the fantasy one? I think that most of you like fantasy. Yeah, it can be The Lord of the Rings, for example, by Tolkien. Mystery, they can be The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle. Biographies uh, are written about famous people like uh, Galileo or Aristotle. And autobiographies, these kind of biographies which are re uh, written by the author themselves. Authors of themselves. For example, Barack Obama and uh, his book is called Dreams from My Father. It will be the autobiography. Okay, thank you. Now, here you can see the words, the author, plot, setting, main characters and the style. Your task will be to work in pairs and match the words with their meanings. You have just to choose and to match it. One minute to do it, because these words are known for you. Okay, let's check your ideas. Number one, im. The second one, dim. Number three, this is b. Four, a and 5, this is C. Great job! Now, also you need different adjectives which will help you to describe a book which you like. I would like to show you the synonyms which you can use. For example, if you want to say that the story was really silly, you can use the word ridiculous instead of the word silly. Now, here you can see seven sentences and your task will be to replace the underlined words with the word from a box below. The words are dull, hilarious, terrifying, moving, fantastic, thrilling and fascinating. Sentence number one, the plot is really interesting. You have to change the word really interesting. Number two, the main character is very funny. Change, please, the phrase very funny. I didn't enjoy this book because it was boring. Think about the word boring, how you can change it. I thought the ending was sad. The word is sad. The story is unexpected and very exciting. Change the word exciting, very exciting. I found the beginning of this book really scary. Think about the word scary. I would recommend this book to anyone because it is very good. Okay, I think that you have finished this task. Let's check your ideas. If you say that the story is really interesting, you can use the word fascinating instead of interesting. Very funny, it means the story can be hilarious. Boring, you can change this word into dull. Sad means moving. Very exciting, this is thrilling. Really scary, you can use the word terrifying and very good, the word fantastic, I think that you know this word. Now, your task will be to make a word cloud. Do you know what a word cloud is? A word cloud is a visual representation of some text as a bunch of words based on a weight associated to each word. On the board you can see two examples of the word cloud. 
So your task will be to go to the website www.wordle.net and to make up your own word cloud using some of the words which were given before it and ideas about reading. Now I will show you how to do it. So firstly, you have to go to the web page wordle.net. Here you can see the main page, the main page of this website. You have to choose the section create. Create your own wordles. Here you can see a space, space where you can type your words. And now I'm going to type the words which are taken from the topic reading for pleasure, such as comedy, reading, science fiction, pleasure. The next word which I have typed, for example, this is a thriller. One of uh, the words is author. Then the genre, romance. You can use the adjective, for example, dull. So all these words are connected to our topic, reading for pleasure. Nonfiction, yes, this is a, one of the genres which I have used before. And for example, the word autobiography. Then after that, you have to press the button go and it starts to create your own word cloud. Now you can see it. It takes some time for you in order to create. Then after it has downloaded, you can change the style of your word cloud. You can change the color, you can choose the color which you like. There are different varieties of color. Then you can think about the layout, how the letters are made. For example, you can use the, it, them horizontally or vertically, half and a half, the research function. And uh, think about the font. There are different kinds of fonts which are represented here. When you have finished your designing, you have to save your word cloud. And after that, it is made. Now we will see the word cloud itself. But uh, before it, you have to give a title to the word cloud. For example, it can be reading or pleasure because these words are connected to this topic. And you can type your username. It can be your name. Then here you can see the word cloud. You can delete it from the page. You can print it. It will be saved on this URL. And here you can see the word cloud. Now, please, Look at the word cloud which I have created using this website. Now it's time for listening. I would like you to work individually. You will hear men talking about books. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. Pay attention to the learning objectives. This is 11L5 to recognize the attitude or opinion of the speaker. And pay attention to the success criteria. You will achieve this learning objective if you have four correct answers. Also, don't forget that you will listen to the recording once only. Listenaminute.com Books. Don't you think books are the best thing in the world? I can't remember a time in my life when I wasn't reading a book. I still have memories of being in my school library when I was about five years old. I have been a bit of a bookworm since then. You will usually see me with my head buried in a book. I love all kinds of books. Novels are great for getting to know other worlds and cultures. A good book is one where you never want the story to end. I also like autobiographies because I think it's interesting to read about people's lives. Encyclopedias are cool too. You can learn everything about everything in these. I still prefer books to the internet. 
Books need to be in your hand and made of paper. Again now, please put a tick on the yes or no. The speaker is keen on reading. The speaker has never visited a library at school. The speaker prefers reading novels and autobiographies. The speaker likes reading books on the internet. Okay, now I would like you to exchange your papers with your partner and we are going to assess your work. Number one, this is A for yes, two, B, three, B, and four, again, this is B. Pay attention that you will achieve this learning objective if you have four right answers. So count your partner's score and circle achieved or working toward. Now, I would like you to find a partner. Now you are going to interview your partner and ask two questions only. These questions are related to books. Question number one, what is his or her favorite book genre and why? And number two, what is his or her favorite book and also the question why? Uh, also, you will be given a success criteria and you have to evaluate your partner according to the success criteria and you have to put the tick in the appropriate box. The criteria are number one, student speaks for one minute, so pay attention to the time. And number two, student uses the topical vocabulary, at least four new words. Okay, I will give you three or maybe four minutes to do this task. Thank you. Now, before uh, reading the book, we have to discuss the literature terms which you need to know. Tell me please, what draws leader into a story? Yeah, this is a vivid, complex character whose problems and triumphs draw forth of our emotions and reveal some truth about humankind. So today I will give you some terms which are connected to the literature. So the first one, these are main characters. Protagonist, this is the main character of the story. The action of the story revolves around the protagonist and the conflict he or she faces. And antagonist also, it is the main character. The character or force the protagonist struggles against and must overcome. Then there are subordinate characters. They add depth and complication to the plot. For example, there is a main character and the, uh, his or her friends will be the subordinate characters. Then flat characters and round characters. Flat characters have only one or two character traits that can be described in a few words. They have no depth like a piece of cardboard. Round characters, they have many different traits that some, uh, sometimes contradict each other. And they are much like real people with several sides to their personality. Also, you have know, uh, to know that there are dynamic characters and static characters. Dynamic characters change or grow as a result of the story section. They learn something about themselves, other people or the world as they struggle to resolve their conflicts. The changes that a dynamic character undergoes contribute to the meaning of the story. Static characters, they do not change or grow and they are the same at the end of the story as they were in the begin beginning. Sorry. Subordinate characters are often static characters. Then also, uh, in a book there is always a conflict. External conflict it is when struggle between a character and an outside force. I can give you an example. For example, character versus character, character versus society, character and the nature. And what about the internal conflict? Struggle between needs or desires or emotion within a character itself. So himself or herself character and himself character versus herself. So now let's read the same extract from the book. There is a conflict. Your task will be to identify what type of conflict uh, does the character face. Yal did some stones, commanded your now and was met with instant giggling obedience as everyone except me began to gather pebbles from the dusty ground. Come on, Elizabeth, I just stood there peering through the bushes, torn between wanting to join the fun and feeling that it was a bit silly. So tell me please, what type of conflict does the character face? Yeah, this is the internal conflict. She has to decide whether to join in or not. And the last thing which you have to know, this is a motivation. Motivation, it is what drives a character's action. It explains behaviors, reveals personality. It is often based on characters, fears, conflicts and needs. Motivation can be inferred by observing characters, behavior, speech or action. Now time to practice. I would like you to think of a story you have read. 
in which the protagonist faces powerful conflicts. Please use a chart like the one here to map out the conflicts and their resolution, as well as the protagonist's motivation. Okay, look at the chart, it will help you. Now, time to go to our book, but first we have to know who the author of this book. I would like you to divide into groups of three. You will use the information below to, get, to guess who the author is. Pay attention that you are allowed to use the internet, your, a computer or a mobile phone. And here are some information, facts about the author. The author was born in St. Petersburg, entered the University of St. Petersburg to study philosophy and history and graduated in 1924. In late 1925 obtained permission to leave Soviet Russia and arrived in New York City in February 1926. And the author published and did it our own journals from 1962 to 1976. So have you found the name of the author? Yeah, absolutely right. This is Ayn Rand. Do you know more information about her? Now, I would like you to work in groups of four. You will be given a text about Ayn Rand. Each of you will have a role in your group. Now I will explain your roles. So the first students, you have to predict. You have to ask yourself questions based on what you have read and what you know. What do you think will happen next? You have to make prediction. What clues help you to think about what will happen next? And is your prediction logical? The second student, you have to ask questions and make connections. Is there anything that you did not understand? Is there anything that did not make sense? What were you thinking about as you were reading? Has anything like this ever happened to you? And have you ever known anyone like this character? So your mission is to ask questions and make connections. Uh, the role of the first student is to clarify. You have to think about the meaning of the words, the phrases which you do not know. Uh, was there a word you weren't sure about? What is it and what page is it on? Were there any ideas with, that were confusing to you or that you do not understand? And what strategies can we use to figure this out? And the last role for the first student, this is to summarize. You have to ask questions like, what are the most important ideas or events? According to the reading, what does the author want you to remember or learn from this? What is the most important information in the passage? What was this passage mostly about? And you have to summarize in your own words. So let's begin our reading in groups. Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand was born in St. Petersburg, Russia on February 2nd, 1905. At age six, she taught herself to read and two years later discovered her first fictional hero in a French magazine for children. Thus, capturing the heroic vision which sustained her throughout her life. At the age of nine, she decided to make fiction writing her career. Throughoutly opposed to the collectivism of Russia culture, she thought of herself as a European writer, especially after encountering Victor Hugo, the writer she most admired. During her high school years, she was eyewitness to two Russian revolutions. In order to escape the fighting, her family went to the Crimea, where she finished high school. The final communist victory brought the confiscation of her father's pharmacy and periods of near starvation. When introduced to American history in her last year of high school, she immediately saw America as her model of what a nation of free men could be. When her family returned from the Crimea, she entered the University of Petrograd to study philosophy and history. Graduating in 1924, she experienced the disintegration of free inquiry and the takeover of the university by communist thugs. Alone an admirer of cinema, she entered the State Institute for Cinema Arts in 1924 to study screenwriting. In uh, late 1925, she obtained permission to leave Soviet Russia for a visit to relatives in the United States. Also, she told Soviet authorities that her visit would be short. She was determined never to return to Russia. She arrived in New York City in February 1926. She spent the next six months with her relatives in Chicago, obtained an extension to her visa, and then left for Hollywood to pursue a career as a screenwriter. On Ayn Rand's second day in Hollywood, Cecile DeMille saw her standing at the gate of his studio, 
offered her a ride to the set of his movie The King of Kings and gave her a job, first as an extra, then as a script reader. During the next week at the studio, she met an actor, Frank O'Connor, whom she married in 1929. They were married until his death 50 years later. Frank, uh, she began writing The Fountainhead in 1935, taking a short break in 1937 to write the anti-collectivist novel at Anthem. The Fountainhead was rejected by 12 publishers before it was finally published in 1943. It made history by becoming a bestseller through word of mouth two years later and gained for its also la lasting recognition as a champion of individualism. Okay, guys, now you have read the text about Ayn Rand, and according to the text, I would like you to design an author bubble chart. Here you can see in the center the name of the Ayn Rand, and you have to write the significant ev event which happens in her life. Think about the most important one. Okay, now the book which we are going to read is called Anthem by Ayn Rand. Have you read this book? Okay, let's read the book review. It is a sin to write this. It is a sin to think words, no other things, and to put them down upon paper, no others are to see. There is no transgression blacker than to do or think alone. So begins Anthem, whose theme is in Ayn Rand's words, the meaning of man's ego. Anthem projects a completely collectivized society, a society in which the word I no longer exist. Anthem is not just a story about the individual being swallowed by the collective. It is also an identification of how that can happen, what ideas people must first accept before such a totalitarian society can take hold. An anthem, and Anthem is not merely a story about the horrible, depressing life of people in a collectivist society. It is also about the triumph of the individual's independent spirit, the triumph of those who reject the ethics of collectivism. In Anthem, Frank examines a frightening future in which individuals have no name, no independence, no values. Equality 72521 lives in the dark ages of the future where all decisions are made by committee. All people live in collectives and all traces of individualism have been wiped out. Despite such a restrictive environment, the spark of individual thought and freedom still burns in him, a passion which he has been taught to call sinful. In a purely egalitarian world, equality 5 to 5 to 1 dares to stand apart from the hurt, to think and choose for himself, to discover electricity and to love the woman of his choice. Now he has been marked for death for committing the ultimate sin. In a world where the great we Rain supreme, he has rediscovered the lost and holy word, I. Now tell me please, raise your hand if you are interested in these books. Okay, most of you want to, re uh, to read it. Now, before reading, I would like to introduce you some technique, which is called annotation, annotating text. In other words, it can be annotated, analyzed, talking to the text, or reading for meaning. So now I would like to tell you about how to take notes in your book because you have to make notes. You know you have to read between the lines. I want to persuade you to write between the lines and you need to read between the lines. Unless you do, you are not likely to do the most efficient kind of reading. What is a good reading? The most reading is skimmed. When you need to learn, reading requires close attention. Good reading is a hard work and good reading makes good writing. What are the reasons for annotation? It helps teach reading as a process. It changes comprehension. It slows down the reading. It promotes more active reading and it helps improve writing. Let's look at, the, uh, at the, an overview of annotation. Pay attention that no one right way to annotate or make notes as you read, but there are general principles for good annotating to keep in mind. You have to write the marginal notes in the text, Taking notes is not just summarizing. You have to ask questions, you have to write and make comments. Close reading takes time. Taking time as you read will save you time and anxiety later as you discuss and write about the text. Uh, here you can see some tips how to annotate. Please read with a paper or a pencil in the help because it helps you focus and stay alert. Also, you can create your own code or symbols and be consistent with your system. Abbreviate using things such as brackets, stars, exclamation points. Also, keep a list of characters and their key traits. A good place. This is the inside cover of the book. 
and add brief notes to your list as you read. And please look for patterns. What ideas do you see repeated? What connections can you draw between different concepts? And the suggested marks for notation. During your reading, you can mark in the text characters, who they are, the setting, when and where, then the vocabulary which you do not know, and some important information which you think that it is important for you. In the margins, you can summarize, make predictions, formulate opinions, make connections, ask questions, analyze the author's craft, write reflection, reaction, or comments, and look for patterns on repetition. Here you can see an example of annotating the text. You can see that the reader writes in the text and in the margins. Now, we are going to start reading the first chapter. Uh, it will be a chain reading. Don't forget to annotate the text while the reading. Okay, we have just finished the reading the first chapter and here are some questions for discussion. Number one. What is the setting of the story? Does it take place in the past, present, or future? How do you know? Who are the main characters of this book? The first page of Anthem begins. It is a scene to write this. Using textual evidence, please explain why equality is committing a scene when he writes. Question number four. Why does equality refer to himself as we? What is the purpose of the Council of Vacation assigning jobs? Why does the Council of Vacation assign equality the job of street sweeper? Is it due to error, incompetence, or a more sinister motivation? You have to explain. When I am going to listen to your answer, I am going to check uh, your speaking on four criteria. Comprehension, fluency, vocabulary, and grammar. Now, the second chapter, it is about equality, the main character of this book, and liberty. How did they met? meet? Do we know about it? I will read an episode from a book when equality met liberty for the first time. There is a description of this place. You have to imagine this scene and draw this place. Part 2. Liberty 5 3000. Liberty Fight 3000. Liberty Fight 3000. We wish to write this name. We wish to speak it, but we dare not speak it above a whisper. For men are forbidden to take notice of women, and women are forbidden to take notice of men. But we think of one among women they, whose name is Liberty Fight 3000, and we think of no others. The women who have been assigned to work the soil live in the homes of the peasants beyond the city. Where the city ends, there is a great road winding off to the north, north and we, we sweep, uh, street sweepers must keep this road clean to the first mile post. There is a hedge along the road and beyond the hedge lie the fields. The fields are black and ploughed, and they lie like a great fan before us, with their furrows gathered in some hand beyond the sky, spreading forth from that hand, opening wide apart as they come towards us, like black pleats that sparkle with thin green spangles. Women work in the fields, and their white tunics in the wind are like the wings of seagulls beating over the black soil. And they it was that we saw Liberty 5 3000 working along the furrows. Now, I have just read an episode from the book and your task was to draw. Now, please, let's watch a video and compare the setting which you have drawn with the setting shown in the video. So your task is just to compare your picture with the setting in the video.
was that? Strawberry. It's good. Sweet. We picked it this morning. We've given you a name when we think of you and our thoughts, Liberty 53000. What name have you given us? Golden one. I don't know why, but when we think of you, it's... It's like the world is good. And it's not a burden to live. We do not call you equality. 72521. When we think of you. What name have you given us? The Unconquered? Thoughts such as these are forbidden. Okay, what do you think about the first meeting, the setting itself? Compare, please. Okay, thank you. And the last thing which we are going to do, this is a Socratic seminar. What is this? The Socratic method of teaching is based on Socrates' th theory that is more important to enable students to think for themselves than to merely fill their heads with right answers. Students are engaged in dialogues by responding to their questions with questions instead of answers. Students are given opportunities to examine a common piece of paper, whether it is in the form of a novel, poem, art print, or a piece of music. After reading the common text like a love letter, open-ended questions are posed. Participants in a Socratic seminar respond to one another with respect by careful listening instead of interrupting. Now, I would like you to make a circle and let's discuss the book. Can you find arguments in there? Uh, because the transgressor 
still uh, watch to them in that way where equality stays. And I think that the council made some decisions and uh, just uh, made some <coughs> decisions and think that equality can broke this society. And then make his profession with strict freedom. Because rich people can't make decisions, they can't affect things on the society, they just treat people yet. That's all. Okay, thank you for your discussion. Now, please, I would like you to self evaluate. There is a three things a suitcase, you have to write something that was useful and you need it. Then, a mincer. The information must be revised and the trash bin, it is something which was useless for you. Okay, and your home task. It will be writing. Think about the book that you have read. This is Anthem. Do you like the ending or not? Now you have a chance to make up your own one. Will it be unexpected, terrifying or fascinating? It depends on you. Please email me your stories. Now, thank you very much for your attention. The lesson is over.